Good morning, everyone. I want to introduce the governor of this great state, Governor Kathy Hochul, who has a few words to share with you about what we anticipate to be a phenomenal event in two weeks. Uh, she is, of course, trapped in the Capitol working on the budget for everyone. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to the governor. Thank you, Commissioner and Secretary, I'm sorry, uh, Catherine Garcia. Uh, you do an incredible job as the head of our state operations. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. I had hoped to join, but uh, we're in the final days, making real progress on the state budget, which uh, has a deadline that is looming. So I want to continue making uh, the progress that we started. So I couldn't break away today, but this is really important that we take this opportunity to celebrate what is going to be a phenomenal event and the epicenter of this, uh, and I agree with the Buffalo Bills, we all love New York. The epicenter that the world will be watching will be in the great state of New York. We have been preparing for this for many, many, many months and getting people excited. This is going to be great for our tourism. It's going to bring in thousands, if not millions of people to localities all the way along the, uh, the trajectory of this. It's going to be Jamestown and Buffalo and Niagara Falls and Plattsburgh and everything in between. So we're excited. And as the bills mentioned, there are some, you know, some, uh, some factors to consider. And I'm going to leave that to my commissioners and my uh, head of state operations to explain more about it and to answer your questions about what this is going to be like. But we want to be really prepared for this, take advantage of this exciting moment in our this is New York's chance to be in the sun and the limelight, and to make sure that we all do this in a smart, healthy way that people remember for generations to come. So uh, we want to make sure you know where to watch. Uh, take the precautions and all these, you know, we saw from the last experience uh, many years ago that there were a lot of traffic jams and people running out of gas. And we're not going to let that happen in New York because we're New Yorkers and we'll be prepared. So that's what today is all about. So I'm uh, looking forward to uh, hearing all the questions and all, but I do have to stay here and uh, keep uh, my head down and get this to uh, over the finish line or into the end zone, as we would say at a Buffalo Bills game. Thank you, everybody. And let me turn it back over to Catherine Garcia, our head of state operations. Thank you very much, Governor. I want you to start with taking a look at the screens and you'll see the visual modeling for a truly, what is really gonna be a truly amazing event. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit excited about it. A total solar eclipse, which is gonna pass by on April 8th, two weeks from today, as the governor said, from Johnstown all the way up across the state in the north through the Adirondacks. It'll take about two and a half hours for it to move through the event in our state, but it'll be just a small portion of time when we are in a total eclipse. The last time it happened in the state of New York was 1925, and it is not going to happen again until 2079. Uh, so I feel like this is my one opportunity. We want to provide some really important information to you for this literally once in a generation experience. We have been planning for this for 18 months. We've created an interagency task force to ensure that we are promoting the tourism, but we are keeping people safe. It is included over 20 agencies, and we are prepared for problems in areas around transportation or cell service, or goodness gracious, what's gonna happen if there are not enough bathrooms on the throughway. Some are here with me today, so this is just a small portion of the commissioners that have been involved in the agencies that have been involved. Commissioner Jackie Bray, the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Commissioner Marie Therese Dominguez, Department of Transportation, Commissioner Hope Knight, Empire State Development, Commissioner James McDonald, Department of Health, and representatives from the Parks Department, Thruway Authority, and the Department of Environmental Conservation. Before we get into de details of our preparation, let's talk about why this event is so special. Eclipses have captivated humanity. They offer a rare glimpse into the workings of our solar system, where the moon moves in front of the sun, briefly cloaking it in shadow. This is a moment that really sparks curiosity. As you all who are just with us for the weather balloon launch, the excitement that those students have about being able to participate in this event is really very palpable. And let's not forget, it's going to be breathtakingly beautiful. Everything transforms into twilight. There is a 360 degree sunset. Planets and stars will suddenly fill the sky. Birds and animals will go quiet. And a rare chance to see a solar corona. 
the sun's wispy outer atmosphere. It is really going to be an unforgettable moment. First, as we said before, know where to watch. This is where you will have to be to get the full effect of the eclipse. As the governor said, the path goes through Jamestown, Rochester, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, and on to Plattsburgh. You know, if you already live there, you're one of the lucky ones. However, if you are planning on traveling to one of these locations, we cannot stress enough, leave lots of time. We anticipate that there will be hundreds of thousands of visitors, and there will be many large events planned. Not only are we expecting all of these visitors, but the timing of the eclipse, obviously, in the late afternoon, overlaps with our everyday rush hour. You know, this is a recipe for severe congestion. And as some of you may remember, in 2017, in other parts of the U.S., there was very severe traffic where people were in their cars for up to 10 hours. We do not want that to happen in New York. That is why we have been planning. So if you have to travel day of, please be extra patient. But if your schedule is flexible, we strongly, this is for Commissioner Knight, we strongly recommend you staying an extra day or two. Uh, to explore upstate New York and all we have to offer. You know, venture into one of our beautiful state parks, sample a local brewery, or spend some time in our vibrant upstate cities. Speaking of New York state parks, we have a lot of state parks in the path of totality. Because of this, the parks department has opened up their campgrounds early. They are 100% sold out for Sunday night and at 93% sold out for Monday night, which is good on two reasons. We want people to have a really glorious place to watch it, but also it means they will not be getting back on the road right away. NASA and Parks will be collaborating to provide programming and special events in Niagara Falls, and we're very excited that NASA chose us. And of course, be safe and take proper precautions when looking at the sun. I mean, looking at the sun without proper eye protection can literally cause permanent damage, and so we have special glasses, eclipse glasses, that will be available in limited quantities at our welcome centers and at our throughway rest stops across the state. If you buy a pair of eclipse glasses online or in a store, please make sure they are from a trustworthy source. Literally, if you can see your hand in front of your face with the glasses on, if you can see, they're not good. If you try these, you cannot see anything unless you are staring directly at the sun. If you are viewing the eclipse with kids, please take special care to ensure that they are not looking directly at the sun. And while we're talking about eyes, during the eclipse, as the sunlight dims, our eyes go through a fascinating shift called perkinging. And what it means is that we're more sensitive to colors. Reds may appear to fade, while greens and blues will come alive. Pay attention to how colors around you change, a great science experiment. And ask people in your group to wear red and green so that you can have the full effect. And finally, I wanna plug our wonderful web website created by our friends at I Love New York, ilovenewyork.com slash eclipse. It's a one-stop shop for everything. You have a full calendar of events, the exact times that the event will be crossing in any given city, lots of safety tips, free eclipse glasses, and research for educators, families, and kids. But my favorite uh, is the Spotify Eclipse playlist. Here comes the sun, total eclipse of the heart. Uh, it goes deep, there's some deep tracks in there. Uh, you know, everything from Frank Sinatra to Jay-Z. That was the fun stuff, and now for the logistics. We know that this will stress our infrastructure. We know that traffic will be heavy. We are coordinating like we would coordinate for any weather event or mass gathering event. From a public safety perspective, we are treating this as a statewide event and studying other states' plans on how they handled 2017. Traffic management is key. Prepared, patient, protected. We're gonna just keep saying, prepared, patient, protected. Um, I wanna also stress, particularly in areas where you are on two lane roads, do not pull over to the shoulder if you are on any of these roads. Do not pull over to the shoulder during the eclipse. Please be in a safe, settled place before that. 
of course, one wild card is the weather, as always. I don't think I need to tell anyone here who enjoyed some 60 degree weather last week and some snow and freezing rain this week, uh, that in upstate New York, April 8th could be 85 degrees and sunny, or it could be 30 degrees and snowy. Um, and what it will be like in Niagara Falls may be completely different than what it will be in Lake Placid. And we really are not gonna know for a few more days what the forecast is. With that, I am going to hand it over to Commissioner Jackie Bray at our uh, Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. Jackie. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I appreciate it. Morning. Um, I want to give a little bit more detail about the public safety preparations, but before I do, I just want to note that behind us is something called the science on a sphere, and it's showing you the path of totality um, of this year's eclipse and uh, the path of totality of the 2017 eclipse. Um, the state will be opening three operation centers. We'll be opening the Albany Emergency Operation Center that's just across the street. We'll be opening two regional operation centers, one in the Buffalo area and one in the Lake Placid area. Um, those will be staffed uh, for the entirety of the event and until we have cleared all of the roads and made sure that everyone is home safely. Uh, in addition, we expect most of the counties within the path of totality to open their emergency operation centers and we'll be staffing those as well, uh, along with our partners uh, in other agencies. Um, as both the governor and Catherine said, we've been planning for months. Uh, we are surging staff to DOT, Thruway, and state police. Um, and in addition to surging people uh, for road management, traffic management, and uh, public safety, we're also surging and deploying assets. So heavy tow trucks, um, what things that we call help trucks um, from DOT that will have you know, a little bit of extra gas supply on hand, be able to help move people to safer places, um, variable messaging signs that will have information. I want to stress the use of 511 that day. Um, 511NY is a great, great resource uh, for real-time traffic information. So if you are trying to leave or to get somewhere, we want you to use that as a resource um, and maybe pick alternative routes too, right? We're all gonna want to be using as many paths in and out as we possibly can. Um, the Thruway service operator, Apple Green has prepared and they're fully stocked to accommodate the anticipated crowds. Um, and all of the fueling locations along the Thruway and that are state controlled will be topped off prior to April 8th. We have also encouraged all private gas stations to top off their supplies prior to April 8th. I also want to offer some explicit safety tips for New Yorkers, anyone visiting us, anyone coming here. Um, number one, come early, stay late. Uh, as uh, Catherine said, uh, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful time to be in upstate New York, but really, really do not assume that you're going to leave two hours before the eclipse and get home two hours after the eclipse. Plan to come early and stay late. Number two, pack your patience. We absolutely expect significant gridlock. You will be in traffic for several hours. It is still an absolutely worthwhile thing to do, but we want to make sure that you stay patient. Um, uh, in addition, number three, pack other things. <laughs> so top off your fuel. Uh, if, you're, if you've got an electrical vehicle, make sure you have a full charge. Keep water, snacks, a blanket in your car um, for you. Number four, only park in designated areas. We have to be able to get emergency vehicles through, particularly in the North Country, those two-lane roads. Uh, we need to make sure that you're not parked on the shoulder um, and that if you have a problem, you get as far off of the road as humanly possible. Number five, cell phone coverage may be a challenge that day. While we are surging resources uh, in terms of additional coverage and while we are um, basically expanding the bandwidth that 911 could use, it is possible that, that cell phones get a bit overloaded. If that happens, remember that 911 will continue to work. 911 works even when our cell phone grid is overloaded, but only use 911 for true emergencies. Being stuck in traffic, if you are okay, is not a true emergency. And then finally, if you are going to the Adirondacks, please stay in designated viewing areas 
try to avoid the back country that day. It's not that we don't want you to appreciate uh, the beauty of the Adirondacks, but we do expect that our Department of Environmental Conservation, our state police teams will be out in force, uh, potentially having to do additional search and rescues, and we want to limit that as much as possible, so we're asking you to try to avoid um, the Adirondacks. Uh, not the Adirondacks, we're trying to ask you to avoid the back country. Um, finally, uh, wear your glasses. That's an important part of public safety. Um, and if you don't have to drive to work that day, if you can cancel appointments that day, if you are in the path of totality, it's the wrong day to try to get to downtown Rochester for a doctor's appointment, right? And so the state um, is uh, allowing folks who can to telework. Those are good, smart decisions to make. Um, is the state recommending schools close for the day or close early? We have seen some schools already announced that they are going to be taking those actions. So uh, we have like been coordinating very closely with the local school districts. This is part of the many months. And yes, many of them are determining to close. As I said, and as uh, Commissioner Bray said as well, uh, to the extent that you do not have to travel, we would like you to try and not travel. So the state has made the decision that for our employees that can work from home, they should work from home that day. We are leaving it to the local school districts to make a determination, but they need to have a plan of how they were gonna move those kids around, and we are encouraging them where they can to keep their kids home or have a remote day. Eric, on the back. Yeah, surrounding the traffic, you mentioned in 2017 there were things that you saw that you wanted to improve upon. Could you mention a couple of those specifics and what you're going to change now? Yeah, certainly. So in 2017 and several other states, there were very long traffic. So what happens when people are stuck for a very long time? It's very similar to what happens in a blizzard. They run out of fuel. They don't have anything to eat and they don't have water. Um, so one is getting the message out, as we do with any severe weather storm, of expect there to be traffic. Uh, the second is the fueling question, which is why we have ensured that there is fuel along the route, as well as we're encouraging people to make sure that they are fueled up or charged. Uh, but we are also making sure that we have, if we need to do any sort of rescue, uh, that we have food and water available for people if they are stranded. So that's why, please, Make sure when you are traveling, I'm going to say it again, do not pull over to the side of the road unless you are actually having an emergency or cause delays of emergency vehicles. Any other on topics? All right, thank you. All right, have fun, folks. <laughs>